Hi, it's Anthony. I wanted to go over how I built these speakers. They're not super detailed. They're something that was going to be in the background of a shot. There's not a lot of detail around the buttons or detail where the surfaces change color. And I didn't want to make all these shapes, so we really didn't have time. So what I decided to do was use a loft nerb to create the shape. So let's get started. Right here are the speakers that I used as a reference. As we build the shape, you'll want to notice that this is the back. We're going to move forward to this step, move forward again to create this face, and then move forward again to create the cavity for the speaker. I don't have a blueprint. I'm just doing it by eye. When you want to do something more sophisticated, you'll use a blueprint and you can uh, move your splines along to the exact positions and make a more sophisticated drawing, but I'm just doing this by eye. One thing I should mention is this uh, screen right here is generated by a an alpha texture and you're going to need to create a JPEG that looks something like this to create this texture. I just made this in Illustrator real quick and you're going to need to make something like that. Additionally, you're going to make something that looks like this, a texture with volume and tone written on it, but we'll go over that in a little bit. So let's actually get started. We're going to start with a new scene, and that new scene is uh, here. Yeah. Quickly, for those of you who are not at all familiar with the loft nerve, the loft nerves are here, and you make a shape with a series of splines. You can think about those splines like ribs. So, for instance, if you have a circle and you duplicate that circle and move it over, and then you duplicate that circle and move it over again. It's important that they stay in order. The Lofner kind of creates a skin or a shell around those ribs. And that's why it's important they stay in order. So what's cool is when you put the ribs inside the Lofner, you can still modify the individual ribs. This way you can create a, a lot of different shapes. You can also come down and click on linear interpolation and that will give you a, a tighter curve around uh, your corners. Of course you can change direction, like let's make another circle and pull it over. We'll make this one a little smaller and we'll pull it behind the other spline to, and that will create a concave effect. So the possibilities are not endless, but there's many, many, many possibilities. Let's get started with the speaker. Let's get rid of this stuff, and let's have another look at the reference. So the back of the speaker is smaller than the front of the speaker. You go from the back to the step, then you go to the front plate, and then you have the speaker cavity. Let's create a rectangle spline. Let's pull it up and pull it back and turn it so we can see it a little bit better. Let's reduce the width to about there. We're just eyeballing it, so it doesn't really matter. Let's duplicate this rectangle. Command key, drag and drop. And you're going to move this forward in space, and that will constitute the back portion of the speaker. Well, let's make another rectangle. And this one is actually going to step out. It's not going to move forward. It's going to just get bigger and create a step. Let's get these windows organized here so we can see what we're doing and like so. So this step we're going to want to make it just a little bit bigger than the other one. Also we're going to make the back wall smaller because the back is smaller than the front. Okay, So we're at this step and the next place that we're going to go is forward in space and so we're going to take that rectangle and duplicate it and move forward again about that far about that f that'll be the sidewall of the face plate so we want to make a little bevel in front so let's make another rectangle so we're going to move forward just a little little bit and we're just going to pull it in just a teeny bit to create a bevel to make a rounded edge so at this point we're going to switch to circles because we're going to create the um, cavity for the speaker. Now the 
circle's going to come in on top here. You've got to remember to pull it down so that the, the ribs go in order. Let's turn this circle so it's going in the right direction on the um, XY. Let's uh, make it a little smaller so it fits inside the speaker. Let's pull it back so it's just in front of our last line, but forward of our last line so we can create a little shape on the front of the speaker. Now we're going to create another circle and we're going to make this one just a teeny little bit smaller and leave it right where it is so we have a double circle at the border. As you can see from the reference, there are several bump downs to the speaker, but we're just going to do the first one where the silver starts and the back one where the ball is. So let's take this first circle and pull it down to where the silver is going to be. Let's create another circle where the back of the speaker is where the ball is going to be. So that represents where the back of the speaker is going to be. Okay, so now we have our ribs. So this is essentially the topographical map to our speaker shape. So let's grab a loft nerb and we'll grab our splines and drop them into the loft nerb and have a look. Not too bad. So far so good. You'll notice that it's kind of bumpy and there's a stretch in the fabric. We're going to fix the bumpiness by going to the loft nerb and increasing the subdivisions um, to 60 and 20. And as you can see without the linear interpolation is a little bit of a roundness but I think I'm going to go for a little bit of the straighter look uh, which is more like the plastic. So let's move on to the next step which is adding some details to the face of the speaker. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's group these together and call this the housing. Let's start a series of rings that's going to make up the, the details on the front. Before we do that though, we're going to need to cut a hole in the top of the speaker. So let's create a cylinder and let's pull that up so we can see it and set it along the Z axis. Let's um, pull it up to the, the kind of the upper middle part and pull it in and change the size over here to 25 and change the height to 30 and let's just push this out to the front of the speaker like that and let's just make it a little bit smaller. So let's grab a bool object and uh, we're going to grab, we'll get rid of that hypernerb. We're going to take these two guys and drop inside the bowl. And the um, cylinder should be subtracted from the housing. If it's not, then you have to uh, rearrange the housing in the cylinder. But this is looking pretty good. So let's collect these guys over here and make them a group. And again, call it the housing. So let's uh, create our first tube and the tube is going to want to go in the plus Z direction and let's um, pull it up and actually let's pull the housing forward and then pull the tube back a little bit and then we're going to pull the outer radius down to just outside the uh, the border there and then the, push the inner radius up to right around there and that looks pretty good and the height uh, we're gonna pull that down so it's just sticking out the front and then we'll up the rotation segments to uh, 64 and then we'll put a fillet in there and uh, we'll make that one you probably noticed that this speaker is very much not to scale. It is currently about 12 feet tall. I'm just going with the default sizes for now and I want to reduce the uh, size of the whole speaker later. Okay, so we have our first ring. Okay, let's duplicate that. 
and let's pull the new one up to the top circle and let's pull the uh, inside radius in and the outside radius in and let's duplicate that and let's look at the uh, it's 29, 27 so we'll make the outside 19 and the inside 14 and uh, we'll create a sphere and we'll pull the sphere up so that uh, we create the back ball of the ins okay what's going on here my tube is out of control <laughs> All right, let's have a look at this. Okay, 1900. No, I don't think we need it to be 1900. Let's uh, bring that back to 19. Okay, so that's looking good. So we've got our, our let's move our, um, move our sphere forward. So we have a bump in the back of the speaker. Let's duplicate that, and let's pull the that one up and uh, make it a little smaller, and push it forward. Stay on the axes. And let's have a quick look. All right, that is basically our basic shape. Let's make the buttons. So we'll need a cylinder. Let's go back to the construction view so we can see. And let's uh, put this in the Z direction. And I'm not going to get into a lot of the detail. Like I said, this project wasn't like that. So I'm not going to do this little light here. Or we're not going to do these other little details, but I figured, you know what? We can do this little uh, indent on the button. We can uh, we can afford that, so let's do that. So let's uh, pull in the button so it's just sticking out the front a little bit. Let's zoom in on the button like so, and let's take that cylinder, make it editable, and let's go into polygon selection mode and select the whole face and right click and do extrude inner and we're just going to pull it like that and then we're just going to do a teeny teeny little extra cut like that you can barely see but then we're going to switch over to extrusion mode and we're not going to extrude out we're going to extrude in that's out that's in and you're just going to do that that's all we're going to do that's all we can afford okay let's get out of the editing mode and uh, go into the regular mode and then let's uh, duplicate um, this cylinder and that's command on the Mac and drag so just hold down command and pull the object over and you create a duplicate object alright so now we're looking pretty good in terms of the overall construction what we're going to do next is get into the various textures that we need. Before we move forward though, let's make sure we really like what we have. This is a R13, so we are going to need to make this housing editable so we won't be able to go back. So let's make sure we like it. Let's pull the front out a little bit and then let's pull this big ring out just a little bit more and then I think I would like to make the um, inside circle of the speaker a little bit bigger uh, no this one yeah I think that looks a little nicer okay good so let's um, organize these elements into a group let's uh, alt G let's call that rings and then this whole housing element we're gonna wanna make it editable so let's do that. Well, actually, that's the null. So we have to go inside the null and uh, select the bool and make the bool editable, editable. And then we're going to put a black material on there. And then we're going to put another black material on the rings. Good. Now that we're at this point, you should make yourself a screenshot and take the screenshot into Photoshop and use it as a reference to create a piece of artwork that looks like this with the uh, text uh, on it. Make sure when you save it you crop it so that it's a square. And also like I said before you're going to want to go into Illustrator and make this dot pattern because we're also going to need that. Alright, let's uh, throw some color on the housing. 
And we're going to do that by creating a uh, selection and setting that selection so that uh, we can add color to just a portion of the mesh. Go into polygon selection mode and open the bowl up and go into the housing and then go to ring select. Select a ring right at the top of the face and holding down shift select another ring all the way down as far as you can reach right behind the uh, the ring there and uh, select that one and then come up and choose fill selection hover over the middle and click that now this whole portion is selection so what we're going to do is set this selection so you can come up here to set selection and set this selection when you do that you're going to get this marker and that in a way isolates that portion of the mesh so now I'm going to go up to the material browser and I've got some nice textures from motion squared so we're going to take this burl texture and drop it down and then we're going to drop that right on the selection and as we can see it's following this twisted pattern on the mesh but no despair let's just change that from UV to cubic and then let's uh, open that texture up and take spectral off and what we're going to do now is take this texture here and we're going to make it into a layer and then we're going to go into that layer and then we're going to create another layer from the shader and on that layer we're going to add our text element let's uh, go in there and add our text element and we're going to also add in a transform effect so that we can slide our text around we can resize it and move it into position if you click off of there you can actually see that the text is already kind of close to where we want it but it's a little difficult to see so let's go to the editor and take the texture preview size and bump it up to 1024 so the text will be quite a bit easier to see so let's go back to our layer that black layer right there you're going to want to make that into a screen so it'll be transparent and then click on that layer and so now we have to adjust the position of the type to uh, match up with the buttons so first thing we're going to do is mirror that then incrementally adjust the position of the text it takes a few minutes so I'm just going to pause the video so you should pause the video and adjust the text see you in a sec alright I'm back I wound up with uh, 1.6, 0.22 and point three. All right, let's go to the next texture and we're going to go to another selection. This time we're going to select the silver interior of the speaker, so let's zoom in on that a little bit. Come over to your polygon selection tool, select the polygon mode, and oh yeah, select the housing. Again, we're going to go over and Go to ring selection mode, select the outside ring, and then holding down shift, select the inside ring. Select fill selection, hover over the middle, click, then come up and come up to set selection, and then set that selection, and that'll give you another marker. Let's take a silver material. I've got this silver material from Video Copilot's Pro Shaders that I quite like, and let's drop that on there and have a look yeah so that's good of course the rest of the body we're going to want to make uh, black so let's take a black and drop it in front of the other colors and the rest of the body will be black and the areas that we separated of course will be their own color let's have a look we're not doing too badly let's start to work on our scene a little bit let's combine these two groups now and just call that uh, speaker alright let's have a look 
And I think the speaker is going to be okay. Let's go ahead and put the speaker on the floor. And I think we're done building stuff, so it's okay to tilt the speaker back. We built the speaker perfectly vertical, but it actually naturally sits back a little bit. So let's uh, roll it back. And let's walk the speaker back. And, and then pull it up. Whoa. Hold on a second. I twisted it. I didn't mean to do that. Let's go back. Let's rotate the speaker down. And then let's raise it up. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Let's duplicate the speaker. And then, oh, with the axes, please, what, okay. Using the axes, we'll pull the second speaker over, open that speaker up, and yes, we're just going to delete the two buttons. And I guess we're also going to um, duplicate this texture and open it up and turn off the text and then, Place it on the second speaker, open this up, and uh, replace that texture on the second speaker so there's no text. All right, let's have a look. Let's change the setting a little bit. So what I want to do is open up my prelit stage, which is hiding in a layer. And let's open that up. And here are the two textures. And so I think I'd like to replace those with a light blue. Sometimes when I'm trying to decide on a color, I like to uh, grab the color wheel. It's kind of good to see, oh, here you go. Just because you want to see the um, complementary colors, you want to see what the analogous colors are. I don't usually go for um, colors at a right angle. I don't really favor those combos. But my brown is right around here, so these blues will probably work nice. So let's go for uh, a blue. And we can replace our scene, uh, and that's our stage floor. And then we can replace our background. And let's have a look at that. Oh, I almost forgot. We have to do the screen for the speaker. OK, so let's create a disk. And let's pull that down and uh, put that along the Z axis. I should have done this already. Anyways, let's just pull this up. Let's spin around so uh, we can see a little better. Let's uh, zoom in like so. Let's switch this back to lines. Let's pull the disc up so it's centered in the speaker area. Let's make it a little bit smaller so it fits. Let's uh, rotate it back to match the rotation of the speaker and pull that pull that in. So let's get that disc in there good. And um, let's move it up a little bit. And I guess we can duplicate that while we're at it. And let's slide the other one over. And now you're going to need that dot pattern that we talked about before. The one that I made in Illustrator, this one. So you're going to need this. If, you're not, if you don't have it, you definitely need it now. So let's make a new material. And what you want to do is turn off color and turn off specular. Actually, you can take specular and you can just roll it down to colored. And that reminds me, take these wood textures and turn them uh, also to colored and put the specularity back on. I turned it off before, but I actually want it. So where was I? OK, so we've got this texture. And so on the alpha channel, you're going to add that JPEG. So that's the screen image. And at the moment, this will be black dots. Uh, so we're going to invert that. So the white portion is the alpha portion. Now that you've created that material, you're going to drop those right on the disks. And let's have a look. And I believe we are super close to being done. Let's have a quick render. Okay, so let's double these and then we're just going to slide them back just a little bit to create some fake depth. And we'll render that again. 
and you don't want the screen to be on the speaker so let's slide that back forward and so it sits on the ring and let's take another shot and have a look and honestly that's pretty close you could take this now to Photoshop or to After Effects and improve the environment a little bit, uh, create a vignette. But if you're not going to do that, you can just go to the camera. And if you're in the physical render mode, you'll have these physical render attributes. And in there, there's actually a, a vignette uh, setting that's pretty nice. So you can give that a try and see how that looks. And apart from that, thanks very much for watching and being patient during this long video. And uh, I was happy to use the loft nerves for um, a project like this. I think it uh, actually works to um, do uh, a shape like this. I think you accomplish a lot really quickly. And uh, again, thanks a lot and uh, we'll see you next time.